Now, researchers have discovered that under certain conditions, the interaction between protein and fat indeed cause a more significant insulin spike than carbohydrates in cadaver cells. Now, this groundbreaking finding is poised to reshape our understanding of dietary effects and the metabolic health. Now, how many of you think that the protein and fat raise their blood sugar? Write in the comments below. I had a patient recently who said that he did everything right and then start eating carbs and his blood sugar start going down. Well, so that's interesting. So let's talk about that for a minute. I'm seeing some people whose blood sugars don't fully normalize, meaning get under 100 all day long. Between 80 and 100 is thought to be normal. But if you're not eating carbohydrates, you're not getting much insulin to go up to keep it down. And I think over time, we're going to learn that the blood sugar is going to be a little elevated, and that's going to be okay because you don't have the high insulin levels to keep the glucose down. Now, that's not well studied, and it's a bit of a, an intuition that I have after following so many people for so long. But the, the idea is that the carbohydrate raises the blood glucose, raises the insulin. Protein does raise the blood glucose and insulin a bit, or protein can actually raise the insulin a bit on its own, which is what it's designed to do. Insulin helps protein into the, the cells. So even when you look at the cadaver cell model, yes, protein could raise the, the insulin level because insulin helps protein get in the cells. So the, this is now confounding the question and the issue. Insulin goes up after you eat protein, not as much as carbohydrate, but the reason is not for insulin to keep the glucose down. The reason insulin goes up after eating protein is that it facilitates the entry of amino acids into the cells. It facilitates the entry of protein into the cells. So insulin has many different roles, not just lowering the blood sugar. So that that's a little, if, if he's not aware of that, he, that, that, okay, I give him a free pass. But if he is aware of that, this is a little disingenuous, that saying that, you know, oh, look, carbs are fine because protein raises it. Well, it's for a different reason. And, and carbs are not fine. But it could be that if you add carbohydrates back, the insulin will go up to keep the glucose down. And the, yes, the glucose can down, go down a little bit, which may explain what it, his patient noticed. That by eating carbs again, the blood glucose goes down because the insulin has gone up. Now, that's a trade-off that I don't think is a good healthy one. But some people choose to do that. And okay, I don't know the answer. But I have seen people who add back carbs a little bit and the blood glucose goes down probably because the insulin goes up a little bit. But is that worth it? I'm not sure. Is it crazy? Not really. Now, of course, carbs are always getting the lion's share of attention. Everybody wants to blame the carbs, which is fine. You know, I'm not saying eat, go eat carbs. For some people, though, that's not necessarily true because for some people, protein and fat can cause significant, even more insulin spike than the carbohydrate. That hasn't been shown. Now, this is a first large-scale comparison, by the way, for the study for examining people like to see how they respond to protein, carbs, and fats. The research team found a surprising variability in insulin responses. In cadaver cells, so dead people, you take the pancreas tissue out and you put it in a cell. And in the paper, they talk about how immature cells, stem cells, can put out insulin in response to protein and fat. Well, remember, the protein can elicit an, elicit an insulin response because it helps facilitate protein into the cells. It's not just a, a carbohydrate raise the glucose, insulin gets the glucose down. There are those two things. But there isn't a side-by-side -side in humans. This was in cadavers and in animal, not well, human cells, but this would be called, you know, preclinical research. It's not in intact people.